Thank you everyone for joining us today to discuss our newest clinical practice update on the role of non-invasive biomarkers in the evaluation and management of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, now called metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease or MASLD. My name is Julia Wadacheril. I am a transplant hepatologist, associate professor and MASLD program director at Columbia in New York City. I'm joined by my co-author, Dr. Manal Abdomalik, professor of medicine at the Mayo Clinic. Our other co-authors are Dr. Joseph Lim, at Yale University and Dr. Arun Sanyal from the Virginia Commonwealth University. Dr. Abdumalik, how pressing is this issue of beginning to standardize the way we use non-invasive biomarkers in MASLD? Yeah, so MASLD or what we formerly knew as NAFLD uh, is highly prevalent, affects nearly 25% of the global population. So clearly our providers and clinicians need simple uh, non-invasive biomarkers and care pathways uh, by which to readily uh, triage patients with advanced hepatic fibrosis or clinically significant muscle. Dr. Watercherrell, where would you recommend busy clinicians even start off? Yeah, uh, rapid, cheap, and uh, easy to discuss with patients is our first step. So we recommend starting with a FIB4. Um, we acknowledge that not every tool works for every patient, especially with heterogeneous diseases, but this can be quickly calculated. And we really want the audience to remember that cutoff of 1.3. So patients at highest risk for advanced fibrosis are patients at risk that we want to make sure that we don't forget about. They generally fall above that cutoff threshold. Dr. Abdelmalik, individuals are not always served by these rapid cutoffs that we choose. So how do we pick up on people that might not be served by a quick screen like FIB4? Yeah, so when the FIT4 score is greater than 1.3, we would recommend uh, sequential testing or concordant testing with a second biomarker. So an ELF score of less than 7.7 .7 or a VCTE score of less than 8 or an MR elastography less than 2.6, depending on what resources uh, physicians have accessible to them, can increase our confidence uh, with a very high negative predictive uh, value of the absence of significant liver disease. Uh, but certainly, Dr. Watercher, what do you do when these biomarkers are discordant or indeterminate? Uh, what's next step? Yeah, that's an opportunity to, to clarify or resolve some of that discordance with either a liver biopsy or expert consultation. Capturing those patients with advanced fibrosis are clearly a priority for further care, so we don't want to miss them. So when there is a discordant result, we do recommend either liver biopsy and or uh, expert consultation in those, in those instances. Thank you everyone for joining us today for this clinical practice update. We hope that our recommendations are useful to the community and we encourage feedback. Thank you.